noon starts right now. And new this noon, a pair of robbery suspects taken away in handcuffs after a chase and then a standoff today. Police say they first got reports of uh, two attempted carjackings early this morning. The first one around 630 and the second at 745. Later around 840, police say a teacher from Passmore Elementary School saw people matching those suspects descriptions burglarizing five vehicles. After that, an undercover detective found a vehicle matching the suspect vehicle description at a shopping center near Military and Highway 90. Patrol officers responded to that area. Police say they chased the suspects to a home on Woodgate Drive, that's near Marbach Road and Loop 410. The suspects ran inside. Officers negotiated with the suspects for about 30 minutes before they came out and turned themselves over to police. A hot spot for breakfast tacos and sweetbreads in one San Antonio neighborhood is soon to be history. After almost 30 years along a busy east side street, that local bakery is closing its doors for good. Katrina Weber shows us that there are some regular customers stopped in for their last bite at that business. With one customer at a time, Marlena Araujo and her family have built a whole community, starting their day off at Nuevo Leon Bakery. I love it. They're kind. The kids always come in. They're super sweet. And they're fast. And then the food is delicious. Nicole Reyes discovered the spot about a year ago, right around the corner from her job. She enjoys the service as much as what's being served. Like a, it has beans, ground beans, sausage, it has bacon in it. For John Ladson, one taco in particular brings him back day after day. But those days for everyone have come to an end. The business at South New Braunfels and Aransas Avenue is closing for good. Araujo is retiring, she says, to spend more time with family, especially her grandchildren. The restaurant itself has been her baby for the past 28 years. <laughs> While she's looking Porque forward algo, to retiring, uh, she's also sad. Over the years, she and her staff have had lots of early arrivals, preparing for customers, including generations of children on their way to school. While this has been a sweet spot for the neighborhood, many regulars say this day itself is bittersweet, and they wonder what they'll do tomorrow. Sad, sad. Real sad. I hate to see him go. That's unfortunate. I'm going to... I don't think I'll find a spot that has the tacos and the sweets. Araujo, meanwhile, is leaving with a full heart from all the love they've shown her. Pues muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Understand wanting to be with your grandkids, but whoa, what a bakery. That's, what a variety. What taste. That's 30 years of memory. It's going to be missed. Incredible. Something bad. This is not going to be missed, though. Mm. Clouds? No. Yeah, I, I think we're all ready for a little bit of sun, right? A little bit of so. sunshine. We're going to get some this weekend. Uh, we're going to have to get through today, though. Today's still going to be a mostly cloudy day. We started off foggy. It was uh, kind of damp, and we had a lot of low clouds. Still dealing with the cloudiness. The fog, for the most part, has lifted. Where we are seeing some sun, places like Kerrville, it's 65, 62 in Honda, but still in the 50s here in San Antonio. And with this cloud cover still holding, probably won't get too much warmer than that. We're forecasting highs today in the low 60s. Uh, if you do see some of the sun, maybe mid 60s for you. Uh, and then around Bear County right now, we've got uh, upper 50s for the most part with uh, 60 at Port SA and 62 Castroville. There's the scene outside again, and we've got an east to northeasterly wind anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. And uh, noting that visibility has come up significantly from when we uh, saw all that fog this morning. Here's what we got going on. Upper level low swinging through parts of the Texas Panhandle. This will continue to move east today. As it does, it could create a few showers maybe around dinner time here. I think the threat for rain is pretty low, 20%. We're not going to get a lot out of it, uh, but there is a chance there. And the clouds, again, as I said, stay with us. But as this scoots east by late tonight, we get some drier air kind of funneling in underneath it, and that should clear us out. And then tomorrow, we're going to get a lot of sun. It will be a little bit breezy. It does bring a front through, and so we'll get some gusty winds with that, uh, and it'll feel maybe a little bit cooler tomorrow morning. 60 by 4 o'clock today, 20% chance of rain, and we'll bring that down to a 10% chance at 7 o'clock. And then uh, as we get into tonight, that's when the winds will begin to pick up, and as we said, cooler tomorrow. Uh, we're going to take another look at the uh, weekend forecast. It's a good one, and when we might see our next chance of rain here in just a few minutes. But for now, let's go over to RJ.
All right, we know a lot of people are excited about this weather that's going to be clearing out, so that's good news. But unfortunately, we are going to see some closures on the northwest side, and we're talking about the 1604 I-10 interchange. Let's take a look here. Again, both directions of I-10 are going to be shut down this weekend until 5 o'clock on Monday, so you're not going to be able to get onto I-10 from UTSA up to La Cantera Parkway. And how about 1604 traffic? You're not going to be able to get on from Vance Jackson to La Cantera Parkway on the 1604 side. Now we have some drone video that we shot a few weeks back when the weather was obviously a lot nicer out there and you could see that they are installing these massive beams. This is the ramp that is going from 1604 to I-10 West up to Bernie. So obviously this is going to take some time out there. We know it's definitely a headache, but there is progress being made on this expansion project. Let's come back out to maps. So again, we're going to have all this information on KSAT.com. Another major closure here lasting until Monday 5 a.m. And make sure you stay safe out there. Follow all those traffic directions and signs. Have a good one, everybody. Speaking of construction, it has been more than four months since construction wrapped up on the St. Mary Strip. And while the trucks and barricades are all gone, businesses say so are their customers. The project included a newly paved street, wider sidewalks, bike lanes, new lighting along the strip. However, Tycoon Flats co-owner Malcolm Hart explains that days of delays and detours and roadblocks is still cemented in the minds of customers. The original completion date was supposed to be October of 2022. According to the city, mistakes by contractors, unforeseen circumstances, and the weather pushed that date back to September of 2023. Everybody I talk to, they just, they go, oh, the construction's done on North St. Mary's? I mean, why would they want to come down here and mess with those detours again? There's so much to offer. There's so much talent. There's so much beauty in North St. Mary's. North St. Mary's has been around for a long time. And it makes me sad to know that it's quiet. Hopefully it will get noisy again one day. Some businesses on the strip have already had to close their doors. Those still operating fear if business doesn't bounce back pretty soon, they'll be next. This has been a long time coming. We've been talking about a nursing program on the south side of San Antonio at Palo Alto for as long as I can remember. And that's been over 20 years. New at noon, Palo Alto College celebrating after getting the green light to offer the first associate degree in nursing on the south side of San Antonio. Robert Garza, the president of Palo Alto College, says college leaders traveled to Austin and the Board of Nursing approved the program. Garza says students will take courses at the South Side Education and Training Center that opened last year. We went behind the scenes of the facility located near Highway 281 and Martinez Lozoya Road. Students will acquire nursing skills through instruction in different labs. Palo Alto College in the South Side is considered what they consider a um, health care desert, um, which means that there's really not um, um, access or affordable access um, to health care in the South Side. Now, we're really excited with our partnership with the University of Health, with the Palo Alto Hospital um, that's going to be here in the South Side. Um, but that's still a few years to come. Um, and so we're going to start prepping our community right now um, to get nurses into the hospitals, into the clinics, and ready to serve our Southside community. Garza says the program will start as early as the fall of this year. They will begin taking applications in the spring. Tax season pretty much underway, and many folks might be getting those W-2 soon if you haven't already gotten them. And there's free assistance for those who need help filing. The IRS created the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance 40 years ago. And VITA workers are back at it this year, helping prepare tax returns for free. The group is made up of IRS-trained community volunteers. It's free tax preparation services to anyone in the community, so long as their household income goes up to $60,000 per year. Um, we have 13 sites throughout the community where people can go, they can make an appointment, or they can just walk up, they can get their taxes prepared for completely free, no cost, um, and then they can get connected to their refunds um, much earlier and so that they can get the money that they're owed. During the regular VITA season in 2023, volunteers prepared more than 20,000 tax returns. Vita saved these taxpayers an estimated $4.7 million in tax preparation fees. The trial of a military veteran accused of murder continued today. Roger McCracken accused of fatally shooting 34-year-old Ronnie Riddle back in 2021. According to eyewitness testimony, McCracken shot Riddle after some words were exchanged between Riddle and McCracken's wife. The defense so far saying this all a case of self-defense. 
This morning, the jury is seeing body cam footage from one of the first responding officers at the scene. Eric Hernandez will have a full report on this case later this afternoon. If found guilty, McCracken faces up to five to 99 years or life in prison. This noon, police are trying to find a driver after they say the person hit two people that were on a San Antonio sidewalk late last night. It happened around 10 last night in the 500 block of Elm Street. That's near I-37. SAPD says a homeless man and woman were on the sidewalk when someone in a black car drove around a corner and hit both of them. Police say that driver continued down the road, crashed into a fence, and then got out and ran away. The man and woman were taken to the hospital with serious injuries. So far, no arrests have been announced by police. Still coming up, Spurs rookie Victor Wimbanyama may have just separated himself for Rookie of the Year honors. We'll explain in sports. It's beginning to look a lot like rodeo season. A beloved event was cooking up fun dark early this morning. Sarah Costa with the sights and sounds from the Cowboy Breakfast after the break. The Cowboy Breakfast is back and now put on by the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo to kick off all things rodeo. San Antonio's woke up before 5 this morning to enjoy those free breakfast tacos and some coffee. Sarah Costa takes us inside the kitchen where the students of St. Philip's Culinary College started cooking at 1 this morning to have all that food ready. The Cowboy Breakfast, it's officially back, dark and early, and now officially sponsored by the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Guys, it's cold out here. I'm going to warm up, but hey, let's go inside and see what's happening. Morning, everybody. Okay, we're going to start at the tortilla section here. All right, we're flipping tortillas, Samuel. When do you know when to flip? So we'll like fill it out and then flip, check it. Maybe it needs to go back. And yeah. How many tortillas have you flipped today? Oh, I couldn't count. <laughs> thousands though. Thousands. Thousands of tortillas getting prepared. Chorizo and egg, you don't have to cook at home. <laughs> How do you know when the eggs are ready? You just put a fresh batch in, correct? Yeah, we just put a fresh batch in. This is about our whole little bag of eggs. So you'll start to see these nice little ribbon pieces. So you know it's starting to get a good cook on it. We have sausage wraps on this side. And this is where you line up. This is the best part where you get your free taco. Can I have a sausage link, ma'am? Thank you. This is a whole sausage link. This is the way to go. You get two free tacos. You get your free coffee. But hey, if you missed this today, don't worry. This kicks off the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Barbecue Cook-Off, which starts today at 10 and goes through Saturday. You can find all of that information on our website at ksat.com. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. You just get sausage wrap unwrapped. Start eating that thing, man. Can't be walking around waving it around. I gotta eat that. That's what it's for. Come on, dig in those eggs. Right. How about a big vat of eggs they had? Oh, look, look pretty good. Here's the thing. And we start off the show with uh, sweet bread and donuts uh -huh. and tacos, and then we finish with tacos. And now you're hungry. So hungry. <laughs> uh, looks great. Anyway, a lot of fun out there at Cowboy Breakfast. The aquifer up today at 10th foot 646.8 still rising incredible and in the pollen count well this is not so incredible molds are high at 2120 and mountain cedar also high still in mountain cedar season at 1440. we look ahead to the weekend we talk our next chance of rain when does this show up we'll take a look coming up It's a big football weekend, and SA Live is ready with the question of the day. Mm -hmm. We know it's not going to be who is Mike rooting for. That's not going <laughs> to well, be the I know. Well, and that's the thing. Okay, so let's get that question up there. Scan that uh, QR code and weigh in. Yeah. Who are you rooting for this weekend? Don't answer. Everybody I'm knows. I'm not. Chiefs, Lions, Ravens, now. 49ers, or Taylor Swift? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, there's a lot of folks that want to see the Chiefs win because of her and that want to see the Ravens win in spite of I feel of her, like I so. have to cheer for the Lions because of you. Can you pick two teams? Because there's there's two games. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, ja that's, <laughs> that's John, our producer, is a Chiefs fan. There you go. <laughs> see, I would pick the Chiefs and the Lions. But if I only get one. you gotta, you got to pick one. All uh, I know is that the newsroom is divided uh, right now. Wait. Really? So, so I can vote right now? Here, let me, let yeah. me do this real right quick. Now. Hang on. I know. He's got to get I got you know let, me, let me do this. He's got to go just, all the way I got, to the I have to go all the way out of camera he here going? real quickly. The you know, because he, he can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> or I can do it like this and just block oh, the view of everybody. Oh, my gosh. 
<laughs> uh, I'll right, let's see Just for you, Mike. Just for okay, you. Same. Going with lions. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, where do I vote? Oh, here oh we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. It's, 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 I got it's it. like Instagram for you. Okay. Uh, we're lions. Okay. Ooh. I've got a vote up there. You better call all your Swift. friends. Call all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of football, wait till you see her and Jen oh. on the gridiron. Oh. Oh. What are they doing? Great. Are they playing? Yes. All right. I would be so, yeah, playing loosely. I would well, say that loosely. I'm being right. generous, so. All right. We'll go with that. <laughs> All, All right, right, the Lions are in the lead. Maybe we'll get Justin to vote. He already did, I think. Did I haven't you? yet. Oh, no. Did you? <laughs> but I will. I forgot to scan the QR code. See, I failed. Hey, <laughs> you know, I'm going with the Lions because I don't want, I, you know, it could be a bad Monday if, my, if the Lions don't win for Mike. So it's I, true. And, and I will say uh, the Lions do have a lot of Aggies, which you brought up at yeah. the clock. Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell, the coach himself. Yeah. So eh, probably the Lions. We'll see. All of it, I think the weather for most of the game is going to be okay. Maybe a little cold here and there, but nothing like, uh, you know, some of the, the snow they had earlier in the playoffs. Hey, I want to show you a great picture. This is uh, coming out of Carn City. Uh, Dr. Scott Kimball sent this in. It's a cool shot. Uh, it says, Mother's Approval. Yeah, cute. Right Very cute. And I'm an Aggie, but I'm still showing the Longhorns oh, here. See wow. what I mean? Because it is cute. Uh, yes, getting ready for the rodeo too. That's right, uh, just around the corner. And as we look at the big picture here, you can see we've got some good rain up across the Red River. Uh, a little bit of snow even in the far northwestern part of the Texas Panhandle, if you can believe that. A low spinning right there. Uh, and unlike the last couple of systems that we saw move through that brought us good rain, this one's a little further north. So that's why we're kind of missing out on the rain for the most part uh, with this system. I can't completely count out a shower around, say, 5 o'clock. See, it does want to develop a little bit of rain down here, but anything we see is going to be light, and a lot of it's going to be east of us. Uh, the heaviest of the rain will be to our north up around Oklahoma City and Dallas. And as the slow continues to spin, uh, pushes a lot of this east by 10 o'clock. So it does show some clearing around, around here, and I think we'll see some clearing overnight. And then by tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, dry air will be mo moving in behind a cold front as this system pushes further and further east and away uh, from us. Uh, so that's why, again, rain chances aren't really huge. Let's take a little closer look here. This is 5 o'clock. Yeah, a few sprinkly showers here and there. And by 8 o'clock, rain's pushing east. Maybe a little bit of clearing tonight. And then here comes the front. The, the big thing with this front is going to be the gusty winds tomorrow morning. Gusts 30 to 35 here in San Antonio. Seems like with every front we've had this winter, it's been windy. Uh, this is no exception. So expect it to be pretty blustery in the morning. If you have like a, a morning soccer match with the kiddos or sports outside, uh, know that it is going to be a little bit windy for a time. I think by lunchtime you'll start to see these winds subside, and that will lead into a pretty good weekend. It draws in some drier air, so our dew points fall from the 50s today down into the 40s and 30s by Saturday and Sunday. And really, we've got some pretty dry air through at least the first half of next week, which will lead to some nice weather. Let's look at that weekend forecast. 61 tomorrow. I'll call it partly cloudy because we could get some cloud cover moving through, but gusts to 30 miles per hour. We drop all the way down to 39 Sunday morning and up to 64 on Sunday. Sunday's perfect. Uh, if you do want to get out of the house and not watch football, it's a good day for that. Uh, and as we look outside for you right now, we've got cloudy skies 58, dew point is at 54. Uh, with those clouds in place, temperatures aren't going to move a whole lot today. 59 at 3 o'clock, 60 at 4 p.m. That's probably where we top out, low 60s. I will put in a 20% chance of rain for a small window there between 4 and 6 p.m., and then we bring the rain chances down tonight. And we'll go partly cloudy at 10 o'clock, 55, 53 at midnight. Extended forecast. Uh, you saw the weekend, 66 Monday, and then more great weather next week. Maybe a bit more cloud cover by Wednesday and Thursday, and maybe by the end of next week. We add back in some rain chances, but as we finish out January and start February, it's going to be pretty quiet, guys. I like the quiet. You like the quiet? A break after yes. all the rainfall. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. Couple of local hoops, women's stars working on getting UTSA to the women's postseason tournament, and the Spurs. Zach Collins getting some military medical training and hanging out with some military folks last night. Spurs started the pre-rodeo road trip homestand Wednesday night against Thunder guard Gillis Alexander and OKC. He scored 32 to lead everybody, but the big matchup was literally the big matchup. Rookie Victor Wimbanyama and Chet Holmgren, both over seven foot, 
And they did not disappoint. Wimby won the individual battle, though. 24 points, 12 rebounds in just 28 minutes, while Chet had 17 points, 9 boards in 30 minutes. Wimby won the battle between the Rookie of the Year candidates. Victor also had four blocks, including denying Josh Giddy. Ah, Thunder won at 114, though. But after the game, Spurs talked about that matchup. I think Victor won, won the challenge to me. Uh, he played great. Uh, he was in each other's face almost the whole night. Uh, that's a big challenge for Vic, and uh, I liked it. The way he played tonight this is the way he tries to play every night. It's not because of any one individual. He's, you know, he plays hard, he competes, he's learning every day. My first goal is always to win, and I don't, I don't th in a game like this, I don't think about that, especially in a, in a loss. Nice Spurs back at it tonight. 8.30, Frost Bank Center. They host the Portland Trailblazers. Once again, that is tonight. Hey, while the Spurs struggle, the UTSA women's basketball team has shot at making the NCAA tournament this season thanks to some local young ladies. There is Judson alum, Carol White, and Steele alum, Sydney Love. They are leading the squad with a 10-8 overall record. And then the Lady Roadrunners set up for an American Athletic Conference title. And they had a lot of pride being hometown hoopsters. There's a lot of pride that comes with it. Like you said, I just want to make my uh, family, my city, everybody really proud. But the next generation is coming up from San Antonio. Like, I want this to be a spot where they're, like, proud to go, hopefully, you know. And just being a kid growing up in San Antonio, like, to know that UTSA is down the street and it's a possibility for you, like, that's, a, that's really cool. I really love that UTSA is keeping local talent because a year, two years ago, this program wasn't really didn't have that much eyes on it, didn't have much, that much attention on it. But last year, I feel like so we just did better than people expected, and that brought some attention to it. So more people, more talent, more great local talent will just elevate the program, I feel like. It'll make a big impact on the, on the people in the city. Yeah, I think that's the most rewarding thing of all, really, is that we have a lot of hometown kids that, that they came here to make a difference. And they now have, you know, developed a pride. You know, I'm not sure that they necessarily had it when they got here but I think they're developing a real pride in the program and I think they do want to make their mark and you know there's opportunity for them. Yeah good to see that success more on the Lady Runners tonight at six in the meantime the guys guard Jordan Ivy Curry made this three with two seconds left to help the men beat Tulane 89-88 the convention center Wednesday he was one of seven from downtown but the one they needed he got right there at the end that snapped a four game slide for UTSA. Never had aspirations to be uh, a surgeon or a doctor, but that was pretty cool. Um, felt comfortable in there. Um, didn't think I would. I thought I'd be a lot more nervous than I was, so it was cool. Yeah, Zach Collins got a little taste of military medical life. He joined some military members at Base San Antonio, Fort Sam Houston last night. He experienced a day in the life of a military medical trainee. He was taught how to properly apply a tourniquet, and he participated in a mock surgery. I had to tie a tourniquet on a on a on a on a mannequin. That was pretty cool. I did it with the lights on and no pressure for the first time, except for everybody looking at me. And uh, I did all right. And then they, they they did the simulator thing. The lights were off. There was a bunch of a bunch of sounds going on. Uh, then the pressure was on, and I and I did it a little better. But uh, I got a long way to go for sure. But it was fun. Not quite like the pressure on the basketball court. Zach also was able to sign some autographs and took some pictures with service members. The Spurs and USAA supporting are celebrating our local military all the time. So I know they appreciate that. And it's, it's great to see him uh, get a little experience with some of those military guys. That was ladies. a That's very fun. incredible experience. Yep. He'll never forget that for no. sure. <laughs> New today at 5, enjoying the outdoors while staying safe. The recalls you need to know before you and your kids hit the bike trails. We break down these and other important recalls today at five after Entertainment Tonight. Outside with live cam, 58 degrees, cloudy. I know it's, for some that's, that's cold, but for others it's like kind of nice. Right there at the cool it's spot. It's not bad, it's not bad. You know, if you think back, it wasn't that long ago we were dealing with some really cool Ooh, weather. Yeah. You remember that? Yep. Wind chill values around zero. Uh, we're not there, but it is uh, sort of jacket weather. Uh, just cloudy today. We don't have a lot of rain or anything like that. We had some fog this morning, that's it. But I want to go back to the pollen count. If you missed this earlier, man, it's uh, not great news. Molter Height, 2,120. 
Mountain Cedars High at 1,440. These aren't huge numbers, but probably enough to give a few folks a headache uh, here and there. We are still in the thick of Mountain Cedar season. Remember, it starts to come down as we head into February. We always say uh, Valentine's Day, kind of the unofficial end to Mountain Cedar season. And obviously molds, too, have been high because of the rainfall. Temperatures today uh, should make their way up to around 60, maybe a little bit warmer if we can see some peaks of sun. So far, we haven't seen that yet, and I don't anticipate a lot, but it's possible as we head into the afternoon. Uh, then we got to start talking about the wind because it's not strong right now, but it will be as we get into tomorrow morning. Once the front comes through, we'll start to see the gusts pick up, and by 9 a.m., we could be looking at gusts around 30 miles per hour out of the northwest. So another gusty front uh, moving through south Texas. We'll see if that stirs up any mountain cedar. Otherwise, it'll lead to a pretty good looking weekend. We'll take a look at the uh, mountain cedar kind of calendar coming up here in just a little bit. And we'll also look down the line and see when uh, rain chances start to show back up in the forecast. That's coming up, guys. Can't wait to see that, cal can't wait to see that calendar. Thanks, Justin. Our latest Know My Neighborhood episode took us to the Harlandale McCollum neighborhood last night. One of the events that stands out in that neighborhood, the annual Frontier Bowl, the Harlandale Indians taking on McCollum Cowboys. Now that is one week the community splits. Your Harlandale or McCollum? Yeah, I got a chance to take a trip down memory lane with a couple of guys who actually played against each other in the 1989 Frontier Bowl. Great stories and now a great friendship bonded by the South Side. Twenty-one to seven, yeah. Yeah, and I got hurt. So I got hurt. Daniel started scoring. But that doesn't matter. You still got other team. You could still have other teammates. Three and a half decades after going at it on the field, these two still going at it, sitting in the stands at Memorial Stadium, remembering those glory days from the 1989 Frontier Bowl. That is Harlandale Indian Joseph Farias and McCullum Cowboy Gabe Cisneros. And even though they're both in their early 50s now, they can still remember those days of busted heads, popping pads, and running plays. It's amazing that I can't remember, you know, algebra or geometry to this day, but I can remember when coach called to play, I can remember what to do, or I can remember what we did. They even remember those certain superstitions. My superstition, when breaking breaking through the, you know, the poster, the, the poster and stuff, I always had to be last. And of course, they remember the blood, sweat, and slobber knockers. I can still see the, feel the snot coming out when you hit somebody, yeah, and yeah. You're, just, you're just cleaning off your jersey because all the snot just came out. Yeah. Two guys from different schools, but from the same neighborhood. One big, happy family supporting either school as long as they were not playing each other. We still know we're family. Oh, yeah. We're Southside family because if we go up against Judson, if we go up against Clark, you know, Holmes, oh, yeah. we know we're going to be rooting for them. Yep. You know, and, and they're going to be rooting for us. Yes, sir. Yeah, it was all nice at ease. One big happy family down here on the south side until it was time for that kickoff of the Frontier Bowl. And no way, they weren't even talking to each other anymore. Students, players, coaches, even the community split for that one week. Every normal week, even when we're playing other schools, you know, for football season, you can go to the store and somebody will hold the, you know, the door open for you and you go eat somewhere and, excuse me, sir, how you doing, whatever. That week, if you're wearing the wrong color, if you're wearing green and you go to the store, the mm -hmm. store, nobody opens the door for no. you there from the other school. <laughs> no. The 89 Frontier Bowl, probably the greatest in its history. Harlandale down 21, able to come from behind and tie it with a throwback pass from Farias for the two-point conversion. Actually, I juked somebody that was trying to hit me. I juked them first, then I threw the ball. And, and what, I, what was the play? It was a renegade throwback pass. I see everybody coming up because they saw that pass. I guess they saw pass, they, they saw heard the pass, throwback, and came. To yeah. me, they sucked up and left Joey, and, by Joey in the back by himself. But the Cowboys still got the trophy. And with the tie and the 8-1-1 one one record, they made it to the playoffs along with bragging rights. And at the end of the game, that's all that really matters. Every year, it doesn't matter. You, can, you can go 0 and you, can, you can't win one game up until then. You know? When that game comes, that's the game. Yeah. That's the game. If you win, you got bragging rights for the rest of the year. More like bragging rights for a lifetime. But when the trash talking is over and the day is done, it's back to being family. Good seeing you. Take care. I can tell you had a lot of fun with this story. Those guys were great. They could have gone all night. They, you know, 
they little hug, little handshake, and then they went right back to the trash truck and they're walking to the cars. It was like they never stopped. It was it was a blast. Great memories. It was Great impressive. Memories. They remember a lot of the small yeah. details, right? Oh, oh yeah. There's, From the yeah, plays you do. to running through the posters. You do. Yeah, you remember all that stuff. Like you said, I don't know anything about algebra or geometry, but I remember that play I ran. <laughs> when I was in high school, so no, that was great. So we appreciate them both sitting down with us and and it was a packed Looking restaurant back. yesterday. We were at Don Pedro's. Ooh. You met a lot of locals down there. A lot of locals down there, a lot of great. They brought out some food, and man, oh man, oh man. Delicious. Oh man, it was awesome. Absolutely awesome. And this is just one course of the many stories that we were able to tell in this neighborhood. Some great stories in the neighborhood last night. If you missed the show, you can watch it on KSET.com. We have an interactive page where you make your own way through the latest editions of Know My Neighborhood. You can scan this QR code to go to that page. Just use the camera app on your phone. That's all you gotta do. We saw Mike trying to do that yeah. earlier. <laughs> that went great. <laughs> now there's growing optimism from lawmakers that the U.S. can avoid an economic downturn. However, some people are still skeptical. Why polls show Americans are still worried about the impact the economy will have on their finances. And it was a surprise move during former President Trump's defamation trial today. Why there was a pause as closing arguments got underway. Welcome back. Former President Donald Trump walked out of a courtroom during closing arguments today. A writer is asking for millions of dollars in damages in a defamation case against her. Today, lawyers urged a jury to award her at least $24 million. Trump's walkout occurred shortly after closings began and minutes after the judge threatened to send one of Trump's attorneys to jail for continuing to talk when he told her she was finished. Next, it'll be up to a jury to decide whether former President Trump must pay E. Jean Carroll millions for defaming her after she accused him of sexual assault. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says she thinks 2024 is gonna be a very good economic year. Her comments come after a strong GDP report showing the economy grew more than 3% in the last year, which is stronger than expected. ABC's Rita Roy tells us that new report shows inflation has cooled even further. The U.S. economy is much stronger than expected, with a new report showing inflation cooling even further. Prices rising just 0.2 percent from November to December. And the latest GDP report showing 3.3 percent growth in the fourth quarter of last year. We have an economy that has been growing at a good, healthy pace. I see no reason why that can't continue. I think 2024 is going to be a very good economic year. The strong growth driven by increases in consumer spending, exports, state and local government spending, fears of a recession diminishing for Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. Yellen sitting down with ABC for an exclusive interview. But no reason right now why there would be a recession this There's year. There's no obvious reason why there would be. That was ABC's Rita Rohr reporting President Biden touting the report, praising Americans for an economic economy that is exceeding expectations. But polls show American voters are still skeptical about Biden's handling of the economy, despite cooling inflation and a resilient job market. Two big reasons the average person is still struggling, the challenging housing market and child care costs. Wendy Edelberg of the Brookings Institution says relief is less about the strength of the economy and more about the policies within it. There's a lot that we should be doing to make it easier both to work and to raise children and to make it more worthwhile to work. Edelberg says the child care system suffers from underinvestment training and retaining workers. And I look outside with live camp, 59 degrees, more wind and more sun. Yeah, we're going to get more sun uh, over the next six or seven days, just not today. Today is kind of our one cloudy day. We're waiting on a front to move through. Once it moves through tonight, though, yes, the skies will clear and uh, we'll get some pretty good weather over the weekend. 58 degrees so far today. 52 was the low, so not a lot of movement in temperatures because of the clouds. 87 and 20 are our records, 1975 and way back in 1897. And yeah, we do keep records all the way back to then. Uh, we're not going to see any temperatures like that. In fact, temperatures stay actually pretty nice going into February. We'll look at that. Plus, as promised, that mountain cedar graph showing 
when we can expect it to go back down. Coming up. So we get through with today and then we finally get that beautiful weekend that we've been hearing about for like several days now. Is that how that works? Yes, and all the kids are going to be outdoors this weekend. Yes, well, especially because like recess was canceled like the first <laughs> the three days this week. They got a lot of pent up energy they got to get out. So yes, this weekend will be good for playing outdoors. A little windy on Saturday and we'll see what that does to Mountain Cedar. I want to show you here kind of the time frame in which we see Mountain Cedar. So those lines that are vertical there. Those are the actual counts that we've seen so far this year. And you can see we've had a couple of spikes right around New Year's Day and then in early January. And by the way, this is when you would typically see it. We typically see Mount Cedar kind of peak maybe a little early, but not by much. Uh, and then as we get into late January, usually by the 1st of February, we start to see Mount Cedar numbers fall off. This is the average. Uh, and we always say uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day is kind of the unofficial end to Mountain Cedar. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We're at 1,440 today. Kind of impressive that it came back up even after these recent rains. And with the winds tomorrow, it may stay a little bit elevated. But hopefully within a week, maybe a week and a half, two weeks, we can start to see these numbers really decline. And we can say goodbye to Mountain Cedar and the Mountain Cedar season. I think we're all kind of ready for that. As we go outside for you, we've got uh, cloudy skies. And temperatures right now sitting still in the 50s, 58 degrees here in San Antonio, 61 Bernie, 67 in Kerrville. Why is it warmer in Kerrville, you ask? They've got sun there. Makes a big difference this time of year. Southerly winds at 13 miles per hour, too, helping to boost numbers there. 54 in Seguin. And it's always kind of guesswork here with the cloud cover. If it stays in place, it will keep temperatures down. So, I mean, this is the forecast for Kerrville. Obviously very wrong. They're already at 67. But that's because the computer models want to see clouds over Kerrville, and they're not there. Uh, here in San Antonio, it is still cloudy, and so that's going to keep temperatures probably in check. We could see a few peaks of sun, but I don't anticipate a lot, at least here in town today. And here is the, uh, the, the clouds. And we are seeing that clarity line get a little bit closer, so it's, it's going to be a close call as to whether or not uh, the sun does pop out here in San Antonio. We can see Kerrville seeing full sun, Fredericksburg, Hondo, a little bit of sun, Uvalde. You go east to San Antonio, it is cloudy. So we'll see uh, how temperatures react if the sun does uh, try to pop out here. Uh, we're waiting on a frontal boundary, which is still out to the west. It's producing a good bit of rain up across parts of North Texas and the Texas Panhandle. That storm system, though, pretty far to the north. So it just doesn't give us a lot of opportunity for rain. I think there's maybe a few showers by, say, 5 o'clock. But so far, we have not seen much on the radar. And as we get towards uh, the evening hours, uh, maybe a break in the clouds and then a few more as the front comes through. And then once the front comes through, uh, we should see uh, quite a bit more clearing as we get into tomorrow. But the winds are going to be a problem. Gusts 30 to 35. Uh, in general across the area, especially across the northern part of our viewing area. And this will go from about 7 a.m. tomorrow morning through about midday before the winds try to calm a little bit. We've had several wind events, so this is going to be another one of those kind of events uh, with this front. When is our next rain chance, you might ask? Well, we got to wait all the way into February, but Thursday into Friday, that's when we start to see a little more energy starting to work its way back into South Texas, and we get to bring rain chances back in. But in the meantime, Pretty good stretch here. Other than that, small chance for shower today. We get good weather over the weekend and into next week. Mainly 60s, overnight lows in the 30s and 40s. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Yeah, this anticipation is just killing me. This Fiona <laughs> and Jen football thing. <laughs> We're all waiting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bar. I wouldn't set it so high. <laughs> it is video. We're going to talk about that in a second. First of all, of course, rodeo officially kicked off this morning with the cowboy breakfast. Now it's lunchtime, and that means barbecue. Hey there, Jen. Where are you? That's right. It's the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Barbecue Cook-Off. It's the 27th one, and, you know, they are hard at work cooking. There's over 300 teams here. And let me tell you, I am starving just smelling all the great food. I'm hoping to get some samples, and, you know, I'll save you guys some. But we'll let you know what you need to know if you're going to come out here this weekend. Please save us some. Oh, look at that. Ooh, yes. <laughs> okay, well... Jen and I tackle along with the all-female tackle football team in town. 
they took us through through some paces, and um, let's just say we're probably not going to make the team. You know, just like those highlight films that, that we all love to watch mm -hmm. out there. So, all right, are you looking for things to do this year around town that are free? We have got the answer for you, or I should say influencer Elizabeth has the answer for you. So all these great things to do, right? Yeah, so we'll be sharing the top five places to visit in San Antonio in 2024. And one has a connection to our state capital, and one has a romantic twist to it. You're gonna love that. And a lot of free stuff to do this weekend. We got a whole list. It's even longer than this list right there. <laughs> all that and more when SA Live continues. Oh, we can do that too.